If you are a true crime enthusiast, put another log on the fire and let's dig in to one of the biggest podcasts, number two on the Evergreen Network, Ohio Mysteries. Host Stephen Yoder and storyteller Paula Schleiss explore the many diverse mysteries in the Buckeye State, from disappearances to unsolved homicides and UFOs. Paula, hello. You and Steven have close to 200 full episodes, almost 400 episodes of Ohio Mysteries. I mean, why this podcast focused on mysteries in Ohio? You know, we discussed what to do. Uh, Steve is my nephew. And when I retired, he called and said, let's do a podcast together. And I said, what would we do about? And his first idea was to do a podcast about who's on death row. And I said, you know, I don't know if I want to spend every week mired in that kind of misery. Can we look for a topic that, well, you know, maybe there's some true crime, but maybe we could have lighthearted weeks. And so we came across the idea of mysteries in Ohio because we do a lot of true crime, but we also do buried treasures and UFOs and, and Bigfoot and, you know, strange phenomenon. And we also get to do a lot of historical stories. I love Ohio history and American history. And we get to go back and do a lot of those things. So Ohio Mysteries was a broad enough topic that we didn't think we'd get tired of it. Now, I absolutely love Ohio. And of course, that's where Evergreen's flagship location is. So I think that was one of the reasons that we wanted to spotlight you. Paula, you also mentioned a very rigorous schedule of recording. Can you share with our listeners that schedule? <laughs> We, this month, we are four years old and we have been producing a podcast episode every Wednesday and Saturday at uh, 8 p.m. So that's two episodes a week. The Wednesday we call a 10 minute mystery. They're usually between 10 and 20 minutes. And um, the full episodes on Sunday last usually about a half hour. And we have produced almost, we're approaching 400 total episodes, amazing. 200 of the full. But when you throw in the 10 minute mysteries, almost 400. It's amazing. And I think you really have to like the person that you're speaking with that often, you know, but luckily it's, <laughs> it's family for you. It is. We love doing it. Now, what is the research like for your shows? Can you describe that? Like your process possibly of the, of the podcast? Yeah. The great, great majority uh, is just uh, information that I can find on the internet. So I have a card to like every major library in <laughs> Ohio. And I know a lot, you know, archive.org and a lot of cool sites on the internet that have databases. And my research comes from that newspapers.com. Um, so I don't do any original research. We don't call and interview anybody on these cases or would never be able to produce two a week. The exception is we collaborate with the Akron Beacon Journal and about every six weeks, we do a series that's called Unresolved and it's murders and disappearances in the greater Akron area. And that one, we always interview a detective or two and we always interview at least one or more family members. And we have done, I think, 11 of those episodes. We just finished interviewing some detectives. We've got the next five lined up. And those are special. Those we get to really, you know, talk to people who are on the inside of those cases. And we, and we love doing those. Um, Paula, so you've worked in media and newspaper writing and whatnot. Can you maybe speak to how that's really helped your podcast live? You know, I think being a reporter for over 30 years has taught me a lot of compassion um, when you have the chance to interview and meet people from a wide diversity of experiences, of backgrounds. You come to really appreciate how to communicate with people, you know, on, a, on many different levels. And I think even when we're not interviewing people, when I'm doing a story, I'm very cognizant of what we want to include. I want to make sure there's a, every bit of information I can get, especially if it's like true crime, about the victim. We really want to focus on that victim and make them a real person, not just a victim. You know, they, they're somebody that a lot of people loved one day, and we really want to bring that out. So I think my experience as a reporter has really affected how I handle, you know, writing those stories. I really respect that approach. 
what, speaking of the people that you cover, you know, maybe you can speak on a couple of your favorite interviews, your favorite episodes. Um, you know, it's really interesting for, uh, probably the first year or so we didn't do any ghost stories because I thought I, you know, I, I kind of believe in ghosts. I'm not afraid to say that, but I, they're not tangible. So it's like, I can't interview them, you know, or tell you what they're really doing. So we just avoided them. I wanted factual stories and people kept, it's like the most popular top requests that we get. So um, we started looking for, you know, are there ghost stories that we can do where we can get to the real history behind it? So if we can't interview a ghost or tell you, you know, really what's going on with a ghost, we can at least tell you, here's a real person that this is based on. And I think some of my favorite stories turned out to be going back and just finding this hidden information about these people that now have a reputation for being ghosts. So there are several, I I can't call any to mind, you know, right this second, but we've been concentrating a lot of them on a lot of them right now because it's Halloween season and we keep getting requests for them. So. What would you tell someone, Paula, who has never listened to podcasts? What would you tell them? Everybody has moments in their life when they wish they could be listening to something interesting while they're doing something else. Podcasts are fun because you can listen to them while you're running or hiking. You can listen to them while you're doing dishes, cleaning, gardening. And it's a great way to kill a a chore or a time when maybe you wanted to go faster. Um, So if you haven't done podcasts, you're really missing out on something that can enrich your life. And it's who doesn't like to learn? You know, most podcasts, we do a lot of history of Ohio. And when you listen to our podcasts, you're going to learn a lot of every single episode. I promise you, you're going to learn things you didn't know before. And if you're picking up that knowledge while you're gardening or mowing the lawn, you know, who doesn't want that? Paula, along with almost 400 episodes, you also have close to 400,000 downloads. What do you equate to that success? You know, we really encourage people when they're listening to our episodes to share us. I mean, that's the way that people can pay us back for all the time and effort we put into this, you know, tell your friends and family about us and just spread the word. And I think people have, I think after four years, we've had some really loyal listeners and it's so much fun to hear from them, but I know that they are spreading the word, you know, they're sharing us on social media. Um, And I I think that's just, you know, if you get fans, they're going to help grow you. Mm -hmm. They're going to help grow you. It's always a good, you know, call to action, so to speak, you know, always giving your listeners and your audience something to an action to do whenever they're listening. Yeah. Uh, One of Steve's favorite things is telling our listeners, you know, don't just tell them, grab their phone and pull up their podcast and load up Ohio Mysteries for them so they know they can just go there and listen to it. And I thought, you know, Steve does that too. If he Tell somebody, you know, what he does. He grabs their phone and he puts on Ohio Mysteries. And it's like, there we got another listener. (laughs) A little aggressive, but shameless. I like it. Yes, exactly. (laughs) That's awesome. Is there anything else that you'd like to add or maybe some advice for podcasters? Um, You know, this has been a learn. Steve and I, after four years, we're still amateurs. Our audio, you know, is often quirky and we do a good job of getting rid of the ums. But every time I listen to an episode, I'm like, oh, I could have just said that differently. (laughs) Guilty. So I think my (laughs) best uh, advice for podcasters is fans are actually really forgiving. So just have confidence. Don't sweat the little stuff. If you're giving them good content, they're going to overlook a lot of the quirky stuff. You're not a professional. They're not expecting you to be professional. And if they are, just remind them from time to time. You know, I just do this on my own time. A gift to you, you know, be easy on us. Um, But yeah, I think it's taken us four years, but we've gotten a lot of confidence. And I think that comes through in our podcast and we're not so hard on ourselves. I love that. And also too, it's a, it's kind of, 
um, charming when when there's mistakes made, I think. And I think that that's what the platform really sort of is forgiving. You know, when you hear those little flaws, it's a reminder. There's a real person on the other end of that audio. And who doesn't want to have those conversations with friends? Yeah. And if you see me as your friend, um, and I want to be your friend. You know, we encourage people to write us all the time. And there are people on social media that talk to us all the time. I feel like I've got some friends out there I've never met. And I'm sure when they hear those flaws, you know, they feel that, that, oh, this is my friend telling me a story. Well, and voices can just lead to that too, where you really feel like someone's talking to you. So I love podcasting in that regard, where you really feel connected to the speaker. Absolutely. Paula, thank you so much for joining us for Evergreen Spotlight. We are excited to feature Ohio Mysteries. Thanks, Julie. Thanks for having me. All right. For those of you listening or watching, you can follow Ohio Mysteries. Pull up your phone, pull up your podcast app and search Ohio Mysteries. You can also find them on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And Evergreen continues to bring you inspiring stories through branded content, original shows, and partner podcasts. I'm Julie Holiday. Thank you for helping us to grow.